We're here at the Albany International Airport to discuss some important concepts of weather. When people first hear the word weather, they think about whether it's going to rain or if it's going to be hot or cold on a particular day. In earth science, it's important to understand why it's raining or why it's going to be hot or why it's going to be cold on a particular day. Well, first we know that warm, moist, less dense air rises through the atmosphere. As it rises through the atmosphere, it cools. And then it cools to a certain point called the dew point. As air reaches the dew point, it becomes saturated and condensation occurs. We see condensation in the air as clouds. Clouds are made of tiny water droplets or ice crystals, depending on the temperature of the atmosphere. If those water droplets become large enough, they'll fall as some sort of precipitation, depending on the temperature of the atmosphere at the time. Remember, precipitation can only occur in the bottom layer of the atmosphere, called the troposphere, according to your reference tables. This layer of the atmosphere is the only layer that contains water vapor. Clouds can only occur in the troposphere if the air is saturated and there's a surface available for condensation to occur. This surface is called condensation nuclei and could be anything in the atmosphere, like aerosols, dust, or even volcanic ash. Think of it this way. An airplane may take off into cloudy, rainy skies and then fly up through the clouds into clear, sunny skies. This is because it has flown above the troposphere, which is the only layer of the atmosphere that contains water vapor and clouds. Clouds can only form in the troposphere if the air is saturated and if there's a surface where water vapor can condense. In the formation of dew, the condensation surfaces are the features of the earth, like grasses and leaves. Dew usually occurs in the very early hours of the morning when the temperatures fall below the dew point. Being able to find dew point is very important. To find dew point, you need a psychrometer. Psychrometer has two thermometers, one with a wet bulb and then one with a dry bulb. What you do with your psychrometer is you wet the wet bulb and then you spin it. As you spin it, the water will evaporate off the wet bulb, cooling the temperature on the wet bulb side. The dry bulb side will simply record the air temperature. When you're done spinning, you bring it down slowly, and then you read the temperatures off each thermometer, and then you go to your reference tables, page 12. You need to find the difference between the wet bulb and the dry bulb side and then you just need the dry bulb temperature. For an example of how to find dew point, we'll use 20 degrees for the dry bulb and 15 degrees for the wet bulb. That would give us a difference of five. And then we would go down the dry bulb temperature down to here of 20. Then we would follow the five column down and the 20 row over which would give us an answer of 12 degrees C for dew point. Relative humidity is found in the same way as dew point. We'll use the same numbers as we did before. We had 20 degrees for your dry bulb temperature and a difference of five. So you go down the five column row and over the 20 and you end up with an answer of 58. It's a relatively cloudy day and there's rain in the forecast for later on this afternoon. That tells me that a low pressure system is coming into the area. The difference between low pressure and high pressure is a very common question to be asked on the Regents exam. Here are the differences. First, high pressure is good weather. It's fair weather. It's sunny. There's no or few clouds in the sky. It's relatively cool and dry and there's relatively no precipitation, and the rotation around a high pressure center is clockwise and outward. A low pressure center means not so good weather. There could be some clouds, there could be some rain. It's gonna be warmer and more humid than usual. 
and the rotation of the winds around a low pressure system are going to be counterclockwise and in toward the center of the low. Today is a fairly windy day. Wind is caused by differences in pressure. Wind always goes from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. In your reference tables on page 14, you'll see the global wind pattern map. On that map, you'll see that the wind is blown from areas of high pressure to low pressure. For instance, at 30 degrees north, there's an area of high pressure, and the wind blows from there to the equator at zero degrees. New York State, which has a latitude between 40 and 45 degrees north, has a southwest planetary wind. So the, areas, the wind is coming from the southwest going to the northeast, which means all of our weather gets blown from the southwest and goes to the northeast. All of these weather changes we have discussed have to do with the equalization of heat energy in our atmosphere. The movement of this heat energy is the major cause of weather. Weather is traditionally one of the most heavily covered topics on the Regents' exam. So when you're studying, make this a priority.